Right YouTube, let's finally, after the last couple of videos, let's finally talk about batteries um, and what I'm going to be currently doing with my DIY Powerwall. Um, the, um, the main part of this is I've got a charge, uh, I've got a good time inverter that requires 60 volts to 90 volts and that's really the range of most good time inverters of 2000 watts. Um, now just very quickly on the inverter itself. The reason I chose a 2000 watt grid time inverter is because um, I'm going to be designing a, a DIY power wall of 10 kilowatts to 15 kilowatts and maybe later, who knows, um, more than that. But um, what I need is I need to be able to use um, quite, you know, at least 2000 watts for a particular point during the, the, uh, or the, the night, um, otherwise having 10 kilowatts of battery power will never actually get drained each night because if I'm only drawing say 500 watts from the battery bank um, then I don't need 10 kilowatts for a night but what I've found uh, with my uh, well, what I what the house consumes is around 10 kilowatts between say 5 o'clock and the time everyone gets home you know there's cooking there's TV watching up until bedtime uh, let's just say 10 or 11 o'clock or whatever time it is um, and after that the the power obviously then drops off to around 300 watts 250 to 300 watts for as a base rate for overnight so if I had a, a smaller inverter uh, or a smaller good time inverter the, the problems I'm going to have is the fact that um, um, I'm not going to be able to use all my battery um, storage within the time before the next morning because I can only pull off say 500 watts at a time. Um, so that's the real reason I went with that I'm or went or slash going with the um, the 2000 watt grid time inverter is so that during um, say 5 o'clock until 10, 11 o'clock at night I can potentially draw up to 2000 watts. Our average um, c consumption is around um, 1.2 kilowatts or 1200 watts. Um, which is like the TV and the heat pump and the other bits and pieces, but um, on the average it's about 1200 watts. Um, overnight the average is about 200, 200 watts to 250 watts. So um, the 2000 watt grid time inverter, uh, well, most of the time between 5 o'clock and midnight or 11, um, will pretty much be at probably about 70% load and then after that time it will be all the way dropped off to um, quite low um, usage so the the other advantage with going for a higher capacity or a larger grid time inverter is the fact that um, the voltages are much higher and I love the idea of higher voltages because the fact that the cables can be um, a heck of a lot thinner or smaller um, if we look at um, for example the DIY, so if we look at the HP Powerwall um, with his test he did I think last weekend or the weekend before, the 2000 watt load test. Um, for the 2000 watt load test uh, on a 24 volt system, um, I think off the top of my head it was around 90 amps it, uh, it drawed and when it was doing a 1000 watt load test at 24 volts it was around 41 amps or something like that. So the amps are really quite high. Um, so obviously next he's going to be changing to 48 volts but um, with having um, a 2000 watt good time inverter the voltages need to be um, higher than 60 volts and below 90 volts so that means that the um, the voltage for the system that I need to create is I'm going to be needing to create a 74 volt nominal um, voltage system which means that at 74 volts at 2000 watts let's just say for whatever reason the, the um, we were using 2000 watts let's just say the kettle got turned on or something like that um, 2000 watts at 74 volts works out to be about 27 I think 26 27 amps so that's a heck of a lot different to 90 amps so and obviously it's a heck of a lot different um, well a lot lower in the respects of um, heat and the respects of efficiency and everything else so it's far more efficient it's far it's far better and it's far easier to design and it's far easier to create 
when you haven't got the need for fat cables and big bus bars and and all those other things everything can be made much smaller which is actually why i think the tesla power wall um is you know that again where it's 350 volts to to 400 and something volts um the, the cables that are needed or the size diameter cables are much smaller because the voltage is really high um for the same output you know you probably need very thin cables just like ac cables um because high voltage means um half as much or far less current um that is needing to flow for the same output um so let's have a look at uh, a spreadsheet that i put together um the spreadsheet kind of um goes over a whole bunch of different things and hoping i'm recording which i am so if we look at the spreadsheet here um, what I've got is I've got my my banks split into three um, so one two and three my what I've done is that um, so I've got pretty much three different pack sizes that I'm creating so if we look at this figure here which is um, these are my the packs that I've currently got 520 something batteries of so so out of that obviously those um, first videos a few videos ago um, I've got about 520 um, cells that are over 2 amp hours so this pack here is going to be the pack that's designed for 2000 milliamp hours and above with an average of 2150 um, the pack below is going to utilize the battery uh, the, the cells that are 1800 to just under 2000 so the average of this pack is going to be 1900 it's possibly going to be slightly higher um, very marginally but at least it's it's pretty much going to be around um, around this size and the other packs the third one um, is uh, kind of just as an idea at this stage um, I haven't started putting this pack together or, or we're looking at this but this is to utilize the cells that are um, 1500 to 1790 or 1780 so the um, the the main thoughts of this is um, this will be the very last thing that I will do um, the first step is bank one which is going to be five kilowatt hours so what I've got here just very quickly is I've got um, an average of two um, just over two amp hours I've got a nominal uh, a charged um, voltage of 4.1 um, realistically it's going to be a little bit higher than that but let's just say it's 4.1 um, there's going to be 20 it's, it's going to be a 20s pack though obviously 20s on all of them um, so um, we're other systems are 24 volt which is um, 7s uh, 48 volt which is what 13 14 s um, but to achieve um, higher voltages I need to have more cells in series to achieve the same thing so uh, what I'm obviously going to be doing is uh, having 20s what this is is there's 32 cells um, per in parallel 20, um, 20 wide so or 20s so uh, 32p 20s 4.1 um, charged 3.7 nominal 3 volts discharged um, so that gives us a total voltage total charge voltage of 82 volts 74 volts nominal 60 volts flat um, the amount of cells that I'm needing to, to fill this pack or to um, create this pack is 640 cells 600 which works out to be roughly around um, 600 uh, sorry, 68 um, amp hours per um, pack in series so um, and that'll bring us pretty much just over the five kilowatt hour um, th uh, threshold for bank one so if we um, look at pack two um, obviously the number of batteries in parallel to achieve the same kilowatt rating because the average is lower we need more cells to achieve the same um, size um, to the average same sized um, per 
pack. So um, this part here is uh, this part here is exactly the same. The only difference is one we need more cells to achieve the same as the above one, um, and the average is obviously slightly lower. And again with the third lot, I need 44 in parallel. That'll give me 880 cells total used, um, and this is actually above the five kilowatt hour by a little bit but i figure that these cells are not going to be as good um, they're not going to perform as well they're much you know, they are older cells in which case this will help itself out by having more of them in parallel so having a look up here and what this has kind of done is this has taken the figure from each of these things here and it's pretty much gives us our total if we were to have all three banks in. If I was to only have um, the two banks in there then I'll be pretty much at, 10 kil at the 10 kilowatt hours. Um, the other thing is, is that if I was to have this whole thing set up it's utilizing 2240 cells. This part here down here just very quickly is that this is the, the spec sheet of the inverter that I purchased, the 2000 watt inverter. Continuous is 1900, that's about right, Let you know, realistically, maybe continuous 1600, maybe 1500 watts. Um, I was slightly wrong in my earlier video, I thought it was 60 volts, but it's 45 volts. Um, and the rest is pretty much um, normal blah blah. So, um, so what I need is I need 45 volts to 90 volts, and that's pretty much what I have here. Now the, obviously the problem is, is that um, my flat voltage, which is 3 volts per cell, is going to be is higher, being 60 volts, than the 45 down the bottom here. Um, so if I didn't have some kind of a relay or SSR, then the inverter will keep running until it gets down to 45 volts. And by then, the, the, these cells are well below um, flat, they're way too flat. Um, so I need to, to put in a limit so that to make sure I need to put a limit on my battery monitoring so that it does not go below um, the 60 volts. So obviously I need some kind of BMS because I don't have any controls on this. There's no controls, there's no fancy dancy stuff. You pretty much plug the batteries in and away, away it goes. Um, so what I need to do is have a BMS that obviously cuts off at 60 volts, which will then turn the grid time inverter off. Um, and I need to come up with how I charge these batteries because I need to charge to 82 volts or maybe slightly above, but I need to get to 82 volts. And there is no charges that are big enough uh, without spending big money to get um, 82 volts constant current constant voltage or I think there, there is 84 volt charges obviously um, but 84 volts at 2000 watts you're looking at about a $500 charger um, that's US dollars so I don't really want to spend that much money on a charger so we're gonna have a bit of fun we're gonna create our own charger um, and we need to do so at a rate that um, we can charge the cells within um, a good period of, uh, within a quick period of time so that we're not waiting for the whole day for the charge uh, for the cells to charge and obviously we're needing to charge um, you know 10 kilowatt hours maybe a bit more um, but um, what I'll do is I'll um, that kind of explains a lot more about what I'm needing to do um, it explains a lot more around what I um, what I've been thinking about and how I'm going to try and achieve um, this next bit of fun which is creating 20 um, packs of 32 cells and um, and going down the whole process of charging and soldering and and, and um, all the rest. So this is the, the first part of the video um, in regards to um, this um, exciting thing of, of actually putting the DIY power wall together and in a, in a way that um, we're going to get some power out of it. So um, I'm, I'll sign off for now and um, I hope everyone um, has a watch of the last few videos um, and yeah, I'll, um, I'll see you guys soon. Great, thanks.